Hi everyone, and welcome to this plant tutorial byte for Oxygen Not Included. As always, make sure to check out the plants tutorial byte if you haven't already, for an overview of the plant mechanics. This plant tutorial byte is all about Saturn Critter Traps, a strange and unique plant only found in the Spaced Out DLC. They are naturally found in cold, radioactive biomes that are themselves only found in the Spaced Out DLC too. Saturn Critter Trap seeds are used to grow Saturn Critter Trap plants, and they can also be fed to Paku. Beware though that like Oxyferns and Weezworts, Saturn Critter Traps do not make more seeds and they cannot be printed, meaning you only have as many as your map spawns with. But fortunately, there are usually quite a few to find. Of course you can dig up a few growing plants, but most of the seeds are actually hidden in buried tiles. By digging these up, you will get a reasonable amount, but the number does vary significantly depending on your map type. Now, I mentioned that Saturn Critter Traps are strange, and that's because they actually eat critters that walk into them, like the real-world Venus Flytrap. That does mean that flying critters cannot be eaten by these traps, and here is the full list of which critters can and cannot be eaten. Once the plant starts digesting a critter, its growth cycle starts, which means two things. Firstly, the plant will start to make hydrogen and release it into its surroundings at 25 kg per cycle, or 41.7 grams per second. Do note though that the rate is the same whether the plant is wild or domestic, so this may influence which you choose to do. Using this hydrogen directly into hydrogen generators means each plant will make 333 watts of power on average, so a little over two plants per hydrogen generator. The second thing they produce is plant meat, which is harvested after their growth cycle, being either 30 cycles if domestic, or 120 if wild. Plant meat is definitely much worse than normal critter meat, as although it does have a poor quality, it must be eaten raw and does not currently feature in any recipes at all. Each harvest makes 12,000 kilocalories, so a wild plant only makes 100 kilocalories per cycle on average, assuming a critter immediately goes into the trap once harvested, and a domestic one, 400 kilocalories per cycle, which is two and a half plants per dupe. Also be aware that the plants must be manually harvested by dupes, and do not drop their plant meat after four cycles, like most other plants. So that brings me on to their info, and I've covered most of this already. The plants like a very cold environment, specifically between minus 90 and zero degrees Celsius, so will need cooling, which we'll look at next with how to farm them. They can also grow in any pressure of gas, but will drown in liquid. When domestic, they require 10 kilograms per cycle of polluted water, which isn't too much, especially compared to an arbor tree or thimble reed. That does mean that even an average cool slush geyser will provide cold polluted water for 90 plants, which is likely more than the amount of seeds you have anyway. They also have a height of two and a decor of 15 at a two tar range. On to how to farm them then, and there are a couple of things to consider. The first thing to decide is whether to farm them wild or domestic. The domestic traps grow four times more quickly, so you'll get four times as much plant meat if that's what you're after. But generally, the more useful thing here is the hydrogen, so growing them wild is better in this case, as you don't have to supply the 10 kilograms per cycle of polluted water, and the hydrogen output is the same. The other benefit is that you don't have to supply as many critters to feed the traps, but the beaters will cover that anyway. Wild planting is done the same as any other plant, and I explain this in full in the wild farming and pit planting tutorial bite. But there's an extra complication here, in that the traps will almost certainly eat the pips after they get planted. As far as I can tell, there's no way around this, and the traps must be planted below zero degrees, or the pips will refuse. Therefore, I would highly recommend using domestic pips from the extra eggs made in a pip ranch and for more information on that, see the Pip Critter Tutorial Bite. Another key thing for the farm is providing a steady supply of critters to keep the traps fed. In theory, you can do this with any of the walking critters I showed earlier, but beaters are by far the most popular option as they are completely free. Although the traps can't eat beaters, they can eat the bee tinies, and one will spawn every cycle. The beta hives should need uranium ore to not starve, but in testing, they never appear to starve, so can be left to spawn bee tinies indefinitely. 
The downside to this is that beaters will sting tubes harvesting the plants, but the stings aren't very strong, so this isn't a major concern. And that brings me on to cooling, which will need to stop the farms heating up and to keep them below 0 degrees Celsius. Note that I've used insulated tiles around the farms and have a step vacuum liquid lock to stop the heat getting in. Also beware that as these farms are kept in hydrogen, Atmo suits are by far the easiest way to manage them. There are a few ways of cooling the ranches, and I'm showing some of the main ones here. I covered all of these in detail in the cooling tutorial bite, so I'll only look at each one briefly. The first way is with an anti-entropy thermo nullifier, which are found in frozen biomes. These take in hydrogen and provide cooling, so obviously work well with Saturn Critter Trap farms. I've put it in an insulated room with hydrogen and passed a cooling loop behind it and the farm, with polluted water in this example. To control the temperature, I've linked a thermo pipe sensor to two doors, on which the nullifier sits. These open to stop it cooling when the temperature is below minus 15 degrees Celsius. And beware the coolant choice for this example and the other cooling methods too, because we need to get under zero degrees and not freeze. Secondly, you can of course use a thermo aqua tuner and steam turbine combo to do industrial cooling. Again, I've covered exactly how to do this in the cooling tutorial bite, and this is an effective way to cool the farm down, but is more power expensive. Here I've used petroleum as a coolant, as it will easily go below zero, and the liquid pipe thermo sensor here is set to above minus 15 degrees. Of course, petroleum isn't as good a coolant as polluted water, which you could use, but in that case, be careful not to set the pipe thermo sensor lower than minus 6 degrees to avoid freezing. Another way I'm showing here is with a thermo regulator. This cooling loop works exactly the same as the AquaTuner cooling loop, but with a gas coolant and a thermo regulator. Hydrogen is the best gas to use, and make sure to use steel radiant pipes, as otherwise radiant gas pipes are made from metal ores, which are much less conductive than the refined metals that radiant liquid pipes use. Again, here I've set the gas pipe thermo sensor to above minus 15, and there's no risk of the hydrogen turning into a liquid. Do beware though, that I tested this, and found that one regulator can barely keep up with two gas pumps and the steam turbine, so I would recommend one regulator per gas pump and 12 plants. So any of these are effective ways of cooling, and note here that you can also use the hydrogen produced to take away some heat when used in the hydrogen generators. For example, before being used, you can pass it around the hydrogen generators and thermoregulators themselves, and make a neat, self-contained build if you wish. Generally, I don't think this is necessary, but if you want some ideas for that, then check out my fellow Only Creator Luma Plays videos on that, which I've linked in the description. To remove the hydrogen here, I'm simply using two gas pumps, each connected to an Atmo sensor to keep a minimum level of hydrogen, and I've set it to above 2000 grams. You can take this hydrogen off for storage elsewhere, or the farm itself will act as an infinite hydrogen storage too, as the plants won't overpressure, as long as you have a liquid lock in place. One pump can take out the hydrogen for up to 12 plants. Lastly then, I'm going to quickly look at how to get this farm started, since the order is somewhat important. After building the farm and cooling, the first thing to do is sort out the atmosphere, so I've set up the liquid lock by bottle emptying some petroleum onto the stairs, and then mopping at the bottom. You could also use a more robust double liquid lock with a vacuum, but as there shouldn't be any too hot or cold materials carried through here, this shouldn't be a problem. After that we can pump out all of the gas inside until it becomes a vacuum. Then I'm going to put in a little hydrogen to get started, and anywhere over a couple of hundred grams per tile will be fine. Now we can wait for the cooling loop to chill this down to below zero degrees. After that we can get the beta hive in, and it's easiest to start by making an area with doors on either side to place the hive. Then use the move command to drop a bee tiny into the space, and wait for it to turn into a hive. Remove the doors, and then you can start planting the plants. If doing this domestically, then this is very easy to do, and if while planting, this will take a bit longer. And remember that the pips will likely get eaten by the plants after each one is planted, so make sure to have a good supply of pips ready. And that's all there is to it. 
the bee tinies will now spawn and feed the plants, and they will make a free, constant source of hydrogen and plant meat. Remember the dupes will still need access to harvest the plants, and will get stung when doing so. But this is a small price for the useful resources. So that's it for this guide to Saturn critter traps, in auction not included. I hope this helps with feeding these tricky carnivorous plants, and thanks for watching.